I remember the first time I knew I was in love with you. There was no cosmic bang, no movement of the stars. None of that shit you see on TV. It was a quiet moment. You were on the couch rambling on about work or the game or politics or something. I laid my head on your chest and I realized it was my favorite place in the entire world. I just felt safe, which is ironic considering the way things played out between us. I've tried to piece it together so many times. Why you um, hit me? You know, I've never said that out loud before. You hit me. The first time you just grabbed me a little rough. Nothing I couldn't handle. We were just taking things too far, as usual. But there was this underlying anger that I've never seen in you before. Then you apologized, and I forgot about it, and the rest is history. I once heard a poem about a man who loves like a natural disaster. I realized I love you like I used to love those summer thunderstorms in the country. I would shake beneath those black clouds and Nana would hold me close and whisper, all beautiful things are scary. Now let God do his work. Those storms showed me that I could love something that I was afraid of that I could shake from the sound of the thunder or fear the lightning strike and still dance in the rain and know that it was just God doing his work. And I always let you do your work. You rearrange my face or swell up my eyes, cracked my ribs as if you were holding a grudge against God himself for letting Eve have one of that. I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy your apology. I think the only good thing about our fighting is that I knew an apology was nearby. And you made a beautiful scene. For me, it was never about the gifts or even the makeup sex. It was the fact that no matter how many times I'd heard you say sorry before, you seem to mean it more each time. The most beautiful thing about being in love is having your breath taken away. The sweet kisses, the tender touches. You did all of that for me. Every blow you gave took my breath away. Every I'm sorry was paired with your kisses. And every time I tried to leave, you pulled me close and loved me even more than before. But last night was the last time. Not that I've miraculously come to my senses and that I'm leaving you. No. Last night, as you handed me the same flowers and kisses and apologies, I decided not to live today. I decided that I would wake up, wash my face, brush my teeth, put on my clothes, and then die. Nothing manic. I don't plan on shooting myself or jumping off a building. Plus, can you imagine having to clean that up? I even thought about 
writing this letter in my blood, but I wasn't sure there was any room for new scars. So in the end, it's just better I go quietly. Mama always said, once you make a decision, commit. And I live my life by that. I've already sent texts out to my friends telling them I'm not coming back. I told them they can't cry for me or wear black to my funeral. And no one should say I was gone before my time. Honestly, I've overstayed my welcome here. Death has been at my doorstep for quite some time, and at this point, I just want to invite him in for tea, you know? Funny thing, death makes you think. It makes you do things you wouldn't otherwise. Last night, as you held me, I memorized your face. I thought it would be the last time I'd see you, but you were the first thing I saw when I woke up this morning. I don't want you to think this is my way of escaping you. You should know that I love you unconditionally and that if you knocked on my door right now, I'd probably tear up this letter and invite you in. But dying will be the first thing I've done right in a long time. We both know that if I don't kill myself, it's only a matter of time before you do. <laughs> Better me than you, right? You know, I thought I would be scared, but I honestly can't remember the last time I felt this calm. Like I'm finally taking control of my life. For once, I know that everything is going to be all right.